Hi, everybody. I just wanted to add a couple of thoughts about finishing off our border. I had um, made a little double line border running underneath some of my seashell elements. I think it's really cute having them lay over the edges. It looks kind of bountiful and it still gives me, you know, a nice little border around the edges. And then I wanted my beach days are the best days. Um, little saying in here. And then I think I'm going to finish off the edges with some of these pencils made by um, Karen Dosh. Um, you can buy them individually at Jerry's Artorama in West Hartford if you're in Connecticut. Um, but there, I'm sure there's Jerry's, maybe Dick Blick, some of the other um, supply stores near you. Um, anyway, Karen Dosh is the company name and it's the Supra Color. And I believe these are water soluble because I was playing around with them and playing with some colors that I want to test out. So I think I'm going to do a little layering and I'm going to use these pencils because I think they'll go much faster than if I just paint these in. So I'm going to just quickly lay in my color with these pencils and then hit it with a little um, water on the brush and see how I like it. I might layer over some darker blue on top of this because I kind of like how I um, put those two together. So this shouldn't take too long. They've got a nice little point on them from the store, so I am um, made sure that they were really careful how they bagged them up for me so they didn't break on the way home. And when I store my pencils at home, I store my pencils with the tips up so I don't bang off the points. Once I get them sharpened, I like to keep them that way. Sometimes I'll sharpen them with a mechanical pencil sharpener. Sometimes I'll use a knife and actually carve off the end to um, make a really sharp point if I need something nice and long. Um, a lot of times if I'm working on a watercolor, I will use just out of habit, I'll use watercolor all the way through. Um, but on my sketchbook pages, I kind of like to play around with some other things and throw in, you know, Posca pen markers or, pig, you know, um, Pigma Micron pens, colored pencils, pastels, you know, whatever. Um, I think playing with a little mixed media is fun. And I think playing and allowing yourself you know, it's either going to be great or it's going to, you know, screw up, but you're going to learn so much from your efforts that you do in sketchbooks. So let's finish this little fill in the lettering. And I think I might give a touch of the dark blue on it here and there. And then I hit it with a brush, a little damp brush and see what we can see what we can come up with. Um, I was telling my class, this isn't the best paper. It's not 100% cotton. It's wood pulp. Um, I had bought these originally because I thought the covers were so beautiful, but the paper, when I first bought these, I really did not like them. But um, over the last couple of years, I've played around with them here and there. And depending on what I'm doing, they're you know, okay, they're, they're, it's all, it's an all right paper. It's not my favorite, but it's, um, still certainly, you know, it's a, this, I've got a nice page here going. So I'm determined to fill up these books, like even my favorite papers. So, and I, my favorite papers to use anything that's a hundred percent cotton. It just holds the, holds all that moisture so much better. Um, wood pulp, you kind of get some uneven drying times, so it's, you know, it can be problematic, but then, you know, if you, if you see along here, there's some, you know, beautiful passages too, so, um, you're not doomed if you have to use wood pulp paper, and it's a great thing to practice on, it's very inexpensive, but a lot of people that are new to painting, they won't spend the money on, um, cotton paper because they think, oh, I'm not worthy of the really good stuff. Well, I tell them, worth has nothing to do with it. You, as a somebody learning watercolor, deserve using good materials. It makes the learning go so much faster. When you're trying to learn on, 
you know, materials that are going to be difficult, that just makes everything about it so much harder. And so you have a real learning curve when you do use the good. I mean, you just whip around the learning curve when you use the good stuff. Oh, it's so much fun. And my students just like are so grateful when they say, oh, I finally tried the good stuff. And, and yes, it is indeed much easier. All right, let's get down to these last two letters and maybe throw in a couple of dark marks here with a darker blue. Let's see what we can embellish with this nice dark blue, a little bit here and there. Let's see what we come up with. And then we'll just hit it with some water. Let's see what it looks like. And this should go pretty quickly. So I wanted to film this in real time so you could just see the time that it takes to go around a page. It's not, you know, too horribly long. Sometimes the speeded up videos that we see on Instagram all the time, they just give us this um, a not very realistic view of things. And then we are, you know, when we can't do something that fast, we're like, wait a minute, you know, hey, what's going on here? All right, let's just throw a couple of couple more marks in here and now find our brush. And let's just kind of liquefy these marks. I also want to get the little droplets of water off the ferrule of the brush. I like these little um, pencils. They're nice. They're they're a fun tool to use. They just make this little task go quicker. But, you know, they're not necessary. I could totally do all of this with watercolor paints, which is what I usually do. I just happened to think of it because I had them out on my desk and I thought, oh, let's use these wonderful little pencils that I just bought at Jerry's. It's always fun getting new tools. So I chose this blue against all these warm tones um, to really, you know, it's kind of opposite the color wheel. These warm tones are sort of like a dirty orange. So I wanted this blue to really make that color bounce. Um, when you put uh, complementary colors next to each other or in the same visual space. They they just really support each other well. Get that water droplet off of there. So the image, this seashell page, is from my class this morning. We talked a lot about contour drawing and placing all your elements on the page, how to get a fun design, how to work from either photographs or life. It's no shame in either one. I love working from life and plein air, but I'm not, I wouldn't say that I'm a plein air police person. Um, there's reasons for each. Let's see if we can get this little, this little corner spread here. I like that little touch of dark blue just to kind of give it a little bit of dimension. 
I've got a tiny brush. It's a size two, and it just, you know, it's rare that I work with such tiny brushes because they they don't hold much pigment, but sometimes if you're working fairly small, they, they're handy, but bigger brushes carry more liquid, so they get that, uh, get the job done a little quicker. Here, I feel like I'm really having to go over this a little bit. All right. So anyway, now you can see how this is, these little aquarellable pencils are really nice. I've got to go to a bigger brush. This is making me crazy. Woo. Let's see, let's try a size four. All right, and we are coming to the end of the lettering. Hopefully I'm still under the camera. not very funny if I you know, start pulling my book around the table and then I realize, oh man, I'm not even under the camera range. So at least we still are in the camera range. There we go. So anyway, in our class, we talked about contour drawing. Again, it's a technique we learned last week and you know, how to fit things on the page so you don't end up running off of the page, how to plan your design, and then how to layer your paint colors and any other mediums that you might be using along with your watercolor paint. And then we talked about borders, you know, how we might, how we might add something or nothing, or maybe just paint a big wash underneath. You know, maybe we wanted to have them laying on a bed of sand. Um, we could do that too. So there's all kinds of ways you can finish your page. It doesn't have to be one, one and done type of thing. And what is always fun is um, seeing how the class chooses to finish off their page, whether they use a border, whether they have them playing on their own, you know, just floating as individual items. So anyway, there we have it. That kind of ties it all together. I love it. Um, I think I could paint seashells all day. I've loved them ever since I was a little girl, and I've brought just boodles of them home. Anyway, I hope you'll try, you know, an interesting border on your page too. Have a great painting day, guys. Bye.